suicide bombs, shootings, and assassinations. Taliban attacks against U.S. and Afghan security forces are on the rise. Civilian deaths are at a record high of around 300 this year. This week, six people were killed at a police checkpoint. Typified, really, the citizen soldier. Earlier this month, the mayor of an American city serving in Afghanistan was shot dead by an Afghan soldier. Before that, dozens of attacks on U.S. and Afghan forces killed many more in the capital, Kabul, and across the country. I call on the Taliban and other insurgent groups to stop killing their fellow Afghans. Hopes were high that last month's parliamentary elections would deliver some stability to the war-torn country. But the vote was marred by allegations of fraud and nearly 200 separate attacks by the Taliban. One of the group's most high-profile killings was of General Abdul Razak, a powerful Kandahar police chief and long-serving U.S. ally who had survived many attempts on his life. Only months ago, a brief ceasefire between the Taliban and Afghan government renewed optimism that the two sides could negotiate a peace deal. But the Taliban's recent offensive has dampened any hope of making more progress, and both sides have refused to meet each other. Russia has tried to broker negotiations, and the Taliban did attend a meeting in Moscow with diplomats from China, Iran, and other regional players. Helping the Afghans to stop these plans and eradicate the terrorist threat is the task of all our countries and of the multilateral organizations in the region. But no high-level Afghan nor U.S. officials took part. Meanwhile, Afghan forces appear to be losing the ground war. One figure says they currently control just over 55 percent of the country's districts. That's down from 75 percent from 2015. Personnel are also in short supply. There is a deficit of 40,000 people, or 11 percent, of Afghanistan's 352,000 personnel target. The worsening security picture poses questions about whether Washington will step up support. Ashraf Ghani's government depends on billions of dollars in U.S. funding to train and equip the police and the military. While U.S. President Donald Trump is openly skeptical of America's role in Afghanistan and already increased U.S. soldiers to 15,000 last year. America will work with the Afghan government as long as we see determination and progress. However, our commitment is not unlimited. Diplomats are looking ahead to next year's presidential elections with anxiety. An ideal scenario could see Afghanistan's warring parties agree on a power-sharing deal, though they'd have to be willing to negotiate first. Delaying the vote is another option, but many fear that would likely bring more uncertainty and more fighting. Sandra Gatman, The Newsmakers.